another fun and interesting little streamer pattern for you this week. This is called the Mayeka Minnow. This was tied up many years ago and created by a gentleman by the name of Steve Gibson to fish for largemouth and panfish on the Mayeka River down in Florida. It's a very simple pattern. It has some weight on the hook shank. It's a marabou tail. It is a flat braid. The original was a flat braid body with some epoxy on the outside and some stick on eyes. It has evolved over the years and many people have done many different things with this. I was uh, kind of reintroduced to this fly this last winter by a friend and had forgotten that I had actually tied this fly or taught this fly in a tying class about 16 years ago. So the fly's been around for a while and it's pretty well proven. I do not know the exact date when it, it was first created. But it has proven a very, very effective pattern if you're looking for something that's just a, say, a one inch to a one and a half inch bait fish pattern. The original was tied smaller than this on a size uh, 10 and 12 hook. This is a size six hook, so it's a little bit bigger. But for me, large mouth, small mouth around here like this size, pretty well. If I tie it much smaller, I'm getting a lot more panfish than I care for a smaller panfish, um, and I rather target the larger uh, smallmouth and largemouth. Lots of different colors which I'll go into um, that are popular as we tie the fly, but it's just a fun, interesting little pattern to tie up. And in no time, you know, you can have a dozen of these in your box and uh, have something to throw out in your waters, and have a little bit of fun. So that's the Mayeka Minnow. We'll go ahead and get started. start the Mayaka minnow by placing your hook in the vise. This is a Mustad 3906B in a size 6. The original was tied with a regular long nymph hook like this but in a size 10 and 12. You could use a Mustad 9671 Tiemco 5262 something like that if you want or a little shorter. Uh, even a wide gapped hook like a Mustad 3366 bass hook or something will work as long as you can get you know the body and the tail the right length that you're looking for once i have the hook and the vise i'm going to debarb this hook then i'm going to add some 0 0.020 lead wire to the hook shank this is simply to give this a little bit of weight i'm going to put in about 15 wraps of lead right on the hook shank Once I smooth those out, I'm going to push those all together and I'm going to have them setting just a little bit forward on the hook shank. I want them not to be right in the center, but a little bit forward. For thread on this fly, I am using a monofilament thread. This is just a, a Wapsi UTC clear monofilament of 0 0.004. I'm going to attach my thread just behind the eye of the hook a little bit. And I'm going to reach down to the back end. You got to be careful, as you can see, sometimes you can move that lead out of the way and I don't want to do that. I want to keep it more forward. And that's why I'm just going to reach down and grab it right behind all those lead wraps and then put some thread wraps back here. I'm gonna build just a little bit of a thread dam. I don't have to have a very pronounced one. The body wrap on this is going to cover all of that up really well, but I don't want the lead to move around. Once I have all of that secured, I'll run my thread down to the end of the shank, which is just between the barb and the point of the hook, and I'll trim away the excess. Mayaka minnow is extremely basic minnow. There's two 
parts to it other than the hook and the lead. There's a marabou tail and I'm using some pearl sparkle braid for the body. That's really all there really is to this with the exception of we're going to put some epoxy on and some eyes just to dress it up a little bit. So I'm going to choose a marabou feather. This is where you don't have to be too finicky on the marabou feathers because for this we're going to actually tie this in and then we're going to cut it flat off the back. And that's just the way that uh, Steve Gibson originally tied it. And so we're just going to stick with that. If you want to find a better uh, tail that's a little more tapered, you certainly can do that. But for your odd marabou feathers that you get on your strung marabou, this is a great little fly to use those on. Don't have to worry about measuring the length of it because what I'm going to do is just tie that in right at the end of the shank. I want to secure that down. And then I'm going to trim straight across like this. I want to measure about a hook shank length right here. And I'm going to just trim right straight across. Gives me a nice, clean, abrupt tail to it. I'm going to wrap over the marabou right up to the lead wraps just to fill in that space a little bit. It also is going to help me have a more smooth transition on top of that lead. Put some thread wraps on that to smooth that off a little bit. And this is where how I tie the body and deviates from what I've seen other people do. Most people will tie their body material in right at the end of the hook shank here. And they're going to go forward and then come back down the hook shank and go forward again and back down to build up, you know, that rather uh, torpedo minnow shape for the body. I have found that it's actually easier for me, or I should say, I have found that it actually produces a better body if I start right up towards the eye of the hook. So about an eye length behind the eye of the hook here, I'm going to tie in my sparkle braid. I don't want any of this hanging out over the eye of the hook, but I want to just go ahead and secure that down. Generally wrap down on that up to the lead wraps and back down. Here, I can use the rotary features of my vise. I'll bring forward the arm and I'll start turning the fly. I'm going to put one layer all the way back down to the end of the shank or to the tail. And then immediately as I get to the tail right there, I change my direction and come forward. And I'm going to put another layer right on top, trying to keep those wraps pretty close to each other. But I'm not going to go all the way up to the eye of the hook here. I'm actually going to go to about the end of the lead and then change my direction again. And I'm going to come down to about where the point of the hook is, right here. Then I'm going to change my direction again. And as you can see, I'm building up right at not so much in the middle, but forward area, that torpedo shape. Here I'll go a little bit further forward, almost to the eye of the hook, change my direction back again, and I'm just going to come down about halfway down the hook shank, and then tr change my direction again, and then come forward right up to the eye of the hook. This is going to give me a body that has that nice torpedo shape to it where it's narrow back here and it gets wider as you move forward. Don't worry if it looks a little bumpy right here. If it's not that smooth or even right in through here, that's fine because we're going to smooth that off with some epoxy in a little bit. Once I have that sparkle bait trimmed off, I am going to just cover up any loose ends right behind the eye to make a little head. 
and then four or five turn whip finish to secure that. Now this version of the Mayeka Minnow is a pearl and chartreuse tail. You probably noticed, because I'm using a monofilament thread, that underneath some of the chartreuse is showing through in that pearl on the back end of the fly. I don't think that hurts this pattern at all, but if you don't like that, what you could do is start out with, say, a 140 denier white, get the tail tied in and cover all of that chartreuse up with white, bring it forward, tie it off, and then attach the mono. The monofilament thread is used on this simply because if I were using a orange or a black or something like that, the color would show through the thread right up front here. Little head cement right up front there, and that's just gonna secure all that right down. Actually isn't needed because as I said, we're gonna put some epoxy on here. So the next step is to get our eyes fixed to our minnow and then put some epoxy on it and then it's done. The Mayeka minnow is such an easy little fly to tie that I just thought I would take some time today to show you how I apply the eyes and give you a few tips and pointers on that as well as how I apply the epoxy to this fly. Now, I'm using a 1 8 flat eye for this particular fly. You could use other ones if you want. The difficulty that most people have with these is they try to peel these off with their fingers and stick them to the side of the, the fly and they get stuck to their fingers. The other difficulty is, is that the adhesive on these, these happen to be a WTP, uh, that's the, the brand or the company that makes them. And the adhesive on the back of those can take up to 48 or 72 hours to really get those eyes stuck on the side of the fly. And even then, with this material here, you're not getting a nice smooth bond between the eye and this material. So it can be kind of difficult to get those on there. If you put a little bit of glue on here, try to use your fingers to put those down, you get glue on your fingers, it's a mess. So I'll show you how I put the eyes on the Mayeka Minnow. I'm going to be using some Loctite Super Glue. Where I want the eyes to go, all I'm going to do is put a small half a drop of Super Glue right there. That is not going to set up until I press the eyes on it, so you have a long work time. Do not feel you're rushed. And to get the eyes off of the card here, I'm simply going to use my bodkin. Any old bodkin will do. Actually, if you have a bodkin like this one that has the flat and or a um, half hitch tool on one end, this comes in handy simply for pressing down on the eyes into the glue. But I'm going to slide the tip of my bodkin right underneath the eye and this will peel off the eye onto the bodkin like this. Now my fingers are pretty much staying out of the picture here with the exception when I lay the eye down on the glue here, I just take both fingers and kind of set them on both sides and peel the bodkin out from underneath. Now I can use the back end of the bodkin or some other tool, flat tool, to just gently press those down into that super glue. Now the eye is glued onto the side of the fly. I don't have a lot of glue all over my fingers and it works much better. Again, putting the other one on, trying to get a decent angle with this. I'm gonna take my bodkin and slide the tip right underneath the eye and get that eye stuck to the tip of the bodkin like this. I'll set that down into where the super glue is at and then my thumb and index finger just go on both sides to hold that in place while I slide the bodkin out. The eye stays in place, not pressed down into the adhesive yet. I take the other end of my bodkin and I can push that down. I even have the ability to move it around just a little bit. So you can check to see if it's, you know, symmetrical with the other side. 
which I don't think is a huge deal if it's a little bit off like this one is, but you can. You can move that around just a little bit. So you push down long enough just to get that into the super glue. Now the super glue is holding that in place. We're not going to rely on the adhesive on these eyes to keep these eyes in place. That's why we're going to put some epoxy on it. The epoxy also will smooth off the body and it actually will give us a really, really nice bait fish profile to it. You could use, instead of epoxy if you want, you could use uh, UV resin, something like that, if, if you would rather. I kind of like the old fashioned epoxy. This is just a Zap Z epoxy. It's a, a 30 minute epoxy. I've got the hardener and the resin here. I'm gonna mix up even doses for what I have to, to the number of flies I have to do. The downside here is, is that you will have to have what's called an epoxy turner or a fly turner. And that keeps the epoxy from kind of dripping all to one side. It just keeps rotating it around and around. And it then will cure, in this case, within 30 minutes, it'll start to set up. I generally will let it run about an hour on the rotator and then turn it off and I'll let it sit for about 12 hours before it finally is tack free and, and it's good. So I've already mixed up um, even, even parts of epoxy here in my little dish. And I'm using, this is just a disposable paintbrush. You could use toothpicks, they come in handy. But for this, I just like the paintbrush. It works real well. I get to throw it away, no problem. I'm going to take a fair clump of epoxy and start applying it right to the middle of the fly. Remember, this is going to be our thickest part of our bait fish. Rotating the fly and working that epoxy down to the end of the body here. I'm just going to keep going around till I'm filling in all of those bumps in the sparkle braid. That's all I'm looking for. I can always add a little bit more, even take away if needed. I'll start to spread that around. Working from the back to the front, get a little bit more. Again, starting to apply that right in the middle of the fly so I can spread it real easy. I'm then going to bring this up to the front and I'm going to rotate that just as I let that epoxy kind of drip off the brush right to the very front of the fly, covering up all of those bumps, all those imperfections in the sparkle braid, just smoothing it off, getting it right down over those thread wraps, right down to the eye of the hook. Careful not to get this in the eye of the hook, although you can clean that out later. Put just a little bit more right in there to smooth that out. If I want, I can run the paintbrush at an angle towards the back like this, just to smooth that out. Now this is a 30 minute epoxy, so it's going to still move and it'll be viscous for a while. So you could sit here and turn this for a little bit and <clears throat> let that kind of smooth out. You could actually sit here and fuss with it all day long. Well, not all day long, but until it sets up, but you know, you don't have to. You're getting at, at least the overall shape and profile. And that is it. So now we have a nice smooth body. The epoxy gives it a little bit of depth. It gives it, it won't have much sheen underwater, but what it does do is it gives it that real nice kind of teardrop shape. Um, and in the water, you know, this thing will sparkle and flash and just look like a, a bait fish. I did use for this the stick on eyes, the flat stick on eyes on this. You could, if you wanted to, you could use say a 3D eye like these if you wanted to. The only thing I caution you there is with the 3D eyes, when you apply them, it will give you a wider profile between the eyes. So you end up with not just 
a kind of a teardrop shape, but you get a, a little bit of a bulge on both of the sides. So you have to be a little bit, you know, careful how much epoxy you let pile up on the sides of that. This is another variation of the Mayeka Minnow. This is just an orange, it's all orange, orange sparkle braid with just uh, red eyes and an orange tail. There's all kinds of different colors you can do in the Mayeka Minnow. Black is popular, all black. Uh, purple is very popular. Lots of different colors that you can do. The chartreuse, all chartreuse, per and the Pearl and chartreuse are very, very popular colors. So that's the Mayeka Minnow. I would put this on a turner, like I said, for at least an hour. So it's nice and set up. And then probably let it set on that turner or set somewhere else undisturbed for 12 hours to, to fully cure. The outside will, will not be tacky and um, it'll be nice and hard and smooth. You can even let this set for 12 hours if you want. The nice thing about the 30 minute epoxy is that this will not yellow over time, or at least it's much less likely to yellow over time. Five minute epoxies can be more brittle. You're casting this out and it hits a rock, it hits a log, you can actually crack and chip the epoxy off. Whereas the 30 minute has a little bit more flex to it. You could use a rod wrapping epoxy if you want to, which is about a 10, 12 hour curing time. So something like FlexCoat or LS Supreme, something like that. Um, again, you would have to have the turner for that. It's a much thinner coat that goes on, but it definitely does not yellow. Again, you could also use a UV resin if you want, maybe even a flexible UV resin or something that would take a little bit more of a beating than the hard UV resin, it's up to you. But that's the Mayeka Minnow. This, as I mentioned, is a size six. The original was size uh, tied in a size 10 and 12. This is just a little bit bigger bait fish. This is about a one inch bait fish right here. If you're looking for something a little smaller, a half inch, by all means, tie this on a smaller hook. Uh, just go for what you want. So that is Steve Gibson's My Ecomino. Thanks for joining me at Device today. I hope you learned at least a new pattern, if not a new technique, maybe a tip or trick here and there. If you have any questions about this fly or any of the techniques used in constructing this pattern, please leave them in the comments section down below. If you go to the trouble to ask a question, I'll go to the trouble to answer it. If you'd like to help dressed irons, Please share this video with your friends and anybody you think that might enjoy this pattern. Until next time, remember, it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong.